Hello, today we are going to be doing the jointer planer in our series of machines that are used in a junior high shop and or senior high shop. Again, I'm going to reiterate that the way in which I'm teaching you these machines is the safest way that you could possibly do it in a junior high, senior high setting. So there can be some rules that maybe you wouldn't use in a generalized home shop, but you know what? There's a, those are rules that are going to keep you safe if you decide to use them. Um, the jointer planer works hand in hand with the thickness planer. In order to use the thickness planer, quite often we have to pass a board over the jointer planer first so we can get a flat surface and then we can pass it through the thickness planer and get a nice straight flat board. I have a board here that has some problems. By the way, I guess I should introduce myself. My name is Mark Felice. I work in Lockport, Manitoba as an industrial arts teacher. Here we have a board that has a problem in the fact that it has a warp. That warp or a bow is like that. That is the concave surface. That's the surface that we want to face towards the blade. This surface is the convex surface. And I'm gonna repeat that quite often when we were talking on the jointer because you have to know which side or which surface faces the blades. There is an in-feed table and an out-feed table on the jointer planer. There is a fence. The fence must be perpendicular to the table to the in-feed table and the out-feed table because you want to have a very, very uh, straight cut. If you're cutting it this way, it is not as important, but if you're cutting it this way, it is very important. So the fence is going to come into play as well. And then we have the barrel of blades, and that's a helical uh, barrel that has four sets of blades on it. And this one has to be happens to be eight inches wide. So I can plane a board that's a maximum of eight inches in width. The machine itself can be adjusted for depth. The depth is adjusted here, and what we would do is we dial in, in this case, I'm dialing in about a sixteenth of an inch. Once I have that sixteenth of an inch, especially in a junior high situation, I like to put this handle like that. If you can, some don't allow, some jointers don't allow you to do that, but that tells me that it's at the, uh, the dimension that I want, I'm not gonna touch it then. In this case here, I'm flattening a large surface. What I like to use is a hand push stick like this. Push sticks are essential on a machine like this. You don't want to be using your fingers. If I use my thumb as a push stick, I could end up taking the point uh, tip of my thumb off. If I use my fingers on the, on the front here, if I hit a knot, I could slip and put my fingers into the blade, and I don't want to have that happen, ever. I have a push stick that I have patterned many, many years ago um, so that I could have my hand on a handle I have a front that's going to allow me front pressure onto the board and it has a hook or a heel that's going to grab onto the board as well. I usually like to put that right about here so I can grab it when I get to the blade. I'm going to use my hands until that time. My hands are going to be a, a little bit safer out here because I don't have a table to push against. So I have to make sure that if I have a long board, using my hands to begin with and I have my push sticks ready at a place where I can grab them when I need them. It's very important that the guard is a working guard, that it's in place. If something's wrong with the guard, you would tell your instructor. First thing you're gonna do is ask permission to use the machine. As I said before, this is a junior high presentation and you wanna ask an adult so that you know, uh, the adult knows that you are using the machine and they have okayed you, uh, your ability to use it. You've gone through testing and that sort of thing so that you know how to use it properly. Wearing goggles is important, so something covering your eyes. Uh, the little pieces of particle of wood that come out here come out very quickly and have hit you in the eye. It definitely could do some damage. We're ready to operate now. I've made sure that the uh, fence is locked in position, so the fence is now locked in position. It can't move. If you move it, if it moves while you're doing it, it's not a good thing. Fence is locked down. I have my push stick ready. Next thing I want to do is turn it on. And remember, concave side facing down. I 
I keep my feet in a position of balance all the way through. Again, I said don't push it through like that. A lot of people want to do that. Don't do that. another anomaly and that is a concave surface going this way as boards dry one side dries out quicker than the other as one side dries out quicker than the other it'll cave in or it'll flex out that's where you get our concave caving in convex flexing out and we always put the concave surface against the bed of the table this time also we're going to make sure that our jointed uh, surface is going to go against the fence so that we get a perfect square cut at the bottom. I'm going to leave it set at 1 16th of an inch on the jointed planer. That's plenty. You don't really want to take off too much more than that. If you need to take off more than that, you have to ask your instructor permission to do so. I'm not going to use this push stick anymore. I'm going to use this push stick on the side. If my board is lower than the fence, I would have to use two push sticks to go over the blade. It's very important to realize that your hands have to stay away from the blade surface even if the guard is in place. I don't want anyone getting their fingers caught in there because they're not going to come back. So I have two push sticks ready if I need it. In this case I don't. I'm going to use a push stick against the side like this. Some people like to do it like this. I prefer to not. I like to do it like this and the reason is I can hold it tight against the fence and my fingers are way out here. I have a mantra that I use with my students all the time, and it's before you start a machine, make sure your hands are safely occupied. Quite often, we have a loose hand that's just sort of waving in the air and doesn't know where to go, and if you see, uh, if you see your mind sees a piece of scrap in there, that loose hand wants to go and grab that scrap. In order to prevent that from happening, I put the hand onto a push stick or onto a board so both hands are safely occupied when you're operating the machine. Or you could also put your hand behind your back if, it is, if it's in the way. But don't have it just sort of sitting there like this and you don't know what to do with it and because that's when that hand is going to get into trouble. And especially with more machines that we kind of have coming down the way. So now I'm ready to cut this. Let's turn it on. And again, I'm going to walk with the board. You can hear it. Just come a little bit there. And a little bit at the other end. And again, tie up the don't make, make sure you don't use the push there because that's going to push it away from the fence. And don't push it at the top because that's going to also push it away from the fence. Keep it tight against the fence. Walk along with it. And try to keep the majority of the pressure over the blade area. Because the board is higher than the fence, I can use my hand on top of the board. If it goes lower than the fence, I'll use the push there. As I'm pushing it through, I try to keep a constant pressure over the blade, a constant pressure against the fence, and walk with the board as you're going through so that you keep a constant forward movement and that you're going to cut the wood evenly. I am now straight on this edge and straight on this surface. I can go back to the thickness planer and thickness plane it to get it exactly uh, to the exact thickness that I want and I still have one edge left over, that's the convex surface. I can't plane that on the jointer. 
If I plane a convex surface on the jointer, it will plane it for sure, but you're gonna end up with a board that is round or curved, but it's gonna be planed and smooth, but it's not gonna be straight. So remember, concave down, convex up. You could, cannot plane the convex surface on the jointer planer. You will have to go to the table saw to get that done.